What's going on, everybody? Dr. Nathan Thompson here with Exemplify Health Center, an affiliate of the Wellness Way in Yorkville, Illinois. Hope you guys are having a good Wednesday evening. I know that a few are on uh, our Facebook page, Dr. Nathan Thompson, and on Instagram. I promised I would be going live at 645. I got hung up just a little bit. And so, uh, but I am going live. I'm going to talk to you about an interesting topic that a lot of people want to ask. Not everybody asks, um, maybe just because of a stigma or something like that in regards to cannabis and uh, or medical marijuana, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to give you my opinion um, because uh, guys, people ask me all the time, um, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this supplement? Uh, is it all that it cracked up to be? And I will always say this, guys, is um, whenever someone is promoting a supplement and amazing benefits of it, um, you know, for some people it helps and for some people it may not help at all. And it doesn't mean there's not any value in a supplement or in this case, um, you know, uh, CBD oil or in this case also THC or taking some kind of medical marijuana or cannabis or something like that. It doesn't mean that you can't be getting help. But my opinion will always be is that go deeper. Okay. Well, so when someone says what supplement, I'll say go deeper. Um, and look at something from its entirety. Look at it from the Swiss watch principle, which we always talk about how something like this affects this, affects this, and affects this, which is why uh, so many times when it comes to health, when it comes to improving your health, there's never one thing that's going to necessarily uh, put you over the top and you have to look at everything in its entirety. So today what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about medical marijuana, cannabis. Um, I'll talk about that because you know, there's a legalization of it in the United States. You know, now states are legalizing it. And one of the biggest reasons why is that people are using it for a whole different, you know, variety of different kinds of ailments or conditions, what have you. Um, but I'm still going to give you my opinion in regards to that because it's not all bright, sunny days and it's not all, you know, candy and rainbows when it comes to um, uh, smoking, inhaling, uh, or you know, are different forms of um, THC and CBD. It's not all necessarily all, like I said, candy and rainbow. So I came across this article. I get these articles emailed to me uh, every single day. And uh, it comes to, it comes from Helio, uh, but the, the actual report came from the American College of Physicians internal medicine meeting uh, that was in Chicago not that long ago. So this article was written April 30th, 2022. Um, and the title of the article is this, guys, uh, and it comes from actually a, um, a PhD in pharmacology uh, who is a professor of clinical pharmacy at the University of Southern California. And this uh, woman actually said there's a real risk there in, in regards to uh, cannabis use exacerbating uh, depression. OK, now. Um, there's a lot of different things that people do uh, in order to help with depression, whether it be um, uh, SSRIs, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are pharmaceutical drugs that are designed to uh, basically increase serotonin within the brain or actually in, uh, inhibit the reuptake of it so that there's more of it, you know, within the central nerve system, particularly in through the brain. Uh, guys, you know, it, it can work, yes, but you'll actually will see that when it comes to SSRIs, uh, the long-term uh, benefits of it really is only benefiting about six to eight weeks, okay, because the body will even adapt to that as well. So a lot of people have turned to quote unquote natural things um, in saying, well, I'm going to take this for depression. Or I'm going to take, you know, um, you know medical marijuana uh, if I'm having seizures. I'm going to have medical marijuana, you know, for fibromyalgia. I'm going to have medical marijuana for depression. I'm going to have medical marijuana for um, MS, you know, things like that. So uh, this, uh, this, this pharmacist, this PhD pharmacist actually said this, and I found it really interesting because, um, when you read further, she said this, she said, I'll tell you right now, cannabis doesn't work for glaucoma. Okay. And it's funny that 27 States have it as something that it's legal for. So it's not evidence-based. It's based on compassion. Okay. Now, um, what that also said too is, is this, this is the, the crux of the article said the short-term effects associated with THC type uh, cannabis 
include dizziness, disorientation, euphoria, dry mouth, uh, somnolence, uh, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, depression, anxiety. Less is known about the long-term effects, okay? Now, they have actually said that recent research has shown that cannabis can reduce depression in the short term. However, the symptoms appear to worsen over time. And so what they actually say is, is a lot of people who are depressed will turn to marijuana, cannabis. And guys, I will tell you this because there's really two different parts to cannabis. Uh, the first one is known as the, the what they extract as THC. This is the psychoactive element of it, um, which actually basically changes mood, behavior, all of these different things. And it's the THC uh, really of, of that people are consuming that can cause um, some changes with how a person feels. Uh, basically, this is the part of it that can make you high. Now, there's also the other part, CBD, and CBD actually does has no psychoactive elements to it. And really what it does is it has a more calming effect, an anti-stress effect on the nerve system. And yes, it can have an effect uh, in regards to uh, you know, people who have chronic pain and things like that. But this warning that she said was that actually, even though it can work for things like depression and anxiety in the short term, as they continue to use it, consume it, smoke it, take it as a mint, whatever it might be, is that over the long term, it can actually exacerbate it. It can even make it much worse. So guys, this begs the question because even in our office, we do carry CBD oil. Um, and uh, usually guys, it's within, an, it's within a carrier oil, um, uh, like hemp oil, uh, coconut oil, uh, you know, and things like that. I have recommended it for people, but I will tell you that I have recommended it in the last year and a half, probably once or twice. Yet, you know, sometimes people recommend it for anything and for everything. And here is the reason why. Guys, if it is depression, if it is anxiety, if it is for chronic pain, if it's for fibromyalgia, if it's for, uh, you know, someone who is having you know, pain with some of the symptoms of uh, cancer treatment, whatever it might be, it's all going to be dependent. But I will tell you this, if, um, you know, the psychoactive component, which is THC, is that guys, it's still not getting to the cause. CBD oil, guys, really still isn't getting to the cause. And yes, we recommended CBD oil to people, excuse me, mainly because to say, until we start fixing causes, yes, you can go on this. But again, it's just a temporary type Band-Aid because there are multiple people who don't have chronic pain, who don't have fibromyalgia, who don't have uh, uh, anxiety, who don't have uh, depression, and who don't take uh, CBD oil or who don't consume THC, whether they're smoking it or whether they're taking it orally, that's been extracted for whatever reason. And so we always want to move to the point where a person doesn't need to be dependent on something, even if it's quote unquote natural. Now here is actually one of the things too, uh, in regards to doing a little bit more research and a little bit more studying is that even when you're taking, um, uh, THC long term is that it can actually cause what's known as serotonin syndrome. So if you ever know what serotonin syndrome is, is that uh, when people will take an SSRI and they quickly withdraw off of it, um, basically one of the things that happens is, is that there is no serotonin that is left. And so if you want to see someone have a really, really, really bad day is when someone has serotonin uh, syndrome and they withdraw themselves off of um, anything that is helping with serotonin uh, to either to keep it longer or with serotonin production. And this can even happen when someone withdraws off of SSRIs uh, way too quickly, or it can happen if someone is using THC long term. And once one of the things, guys, is it goes to show you is that when you're talking about anxiety and when you're talking about depression, um, yes, there are mental components to it. There's no doubt about it. Mental stress is real. Depression from mental issues is real. Anxiety from mental issues is real. But guys, the reason why pharmaceuticals 
have, in my opinion, failed completely is because we have not addressed the physical components of anxiety and depression, but also the chemical components of anxiety and depression. And I'm going to give you a little bit you know, of what happens clinically. Because guys, serotonin, yes, they think that it's the, that we call it the feel good hormone, the happiness hormone. Serotonin is intimately tied into a gastrointestinal motility. And in fact, that's why they say um, most of your serotonin is produced around the gastrointestinal system within the nerve system that's actually around it. So where most of your serotonin is made is actually around the gastrointestinal system and it's not made in the brain. Let me say that again. Most of it is made around the gastrointestinal system. And I think, don't quote me, about three to 4% is actually made within the brain. So I'm gonna offer you a different perspective when it comes to depression. Quit saying that it's a 100% brain issue or that my body isn't making enough serotonin. The problem is, is that your brain really is a receiver. Let me say that again. It's a receiver to what is happening within the body, which means that if you have a sick gastrointestinal system, um, you're going to have a sick brain. And so a lot of times, if you start to get initially a lot of inflammation within the gastrointestinal system, then you can actually have a lot of serotonin production within the gastrointestinal system, which is why it can cause some issues with diarrhea and things like that. But when you have, um, you know, initially this inflammation, it can tend to cause a lot of anxiety within the brain. Long-term, when you have long-term chronic inflammation, um, issues happening in the GI system, then one of the things that it can is it can start to decrease serotonin production within the gut. And remember, the brain is a receiver for it, which can actually, uh, there's a link between what's happening in the GI and depression. So what are we doing in healthcare? We're offering an SSRI. And, and guys, uh, if you actually uh, read, uh, you know, work with, you know, some people who are psychiatrists, um, they'll actually say when they look at the research, a lot of the research in as far as the efficacy is concerned, really was only done for six to eight weeks. And they found an improvement at six, but they found no improvement at 12. And the ones that were actually uh, the studies that they use for approval, they use the six weeks. So ask people, you know, as well, is that there are a lot of people who are depressed and yes, depression guys is real, but who say, yeah, it helped, but now I continue to stay on that medication just to stay depressed. And I'm scared what will happen if it actually, if you actually go off of that medication. And so a lot of people are just scared um, to do anything because they need to be on that medication just to stay at a level of depression. And they're scared that they will go into a, even a deeper depression because if they go off of it. So guys, you have to look at even depression from a physical, from a mental, and also from a chemical aspect, because nothing is purely chemical, nothing is purely mental, and nothing is purely physical. And this is what's so beautiful about the Wellness Way approach is this, is that we're looking at all of those different things. The reason why a person gets sick is because of the body's inability to adapt to too much mental stress and chemical stress and physical stress, which is why you need to handle all three. And we are the only doctors um, in, the, in the healing arts that are actually trying to help with all three of those areas in order to get a person back to wholeness, to stop manipulating a person with medicines and to start restoring a person back to physiological normal because physiological normal, guys, is enough. You weren't made to be broken. You weren't made uh, to be less than. You were made to be whole. And the problem is, is that no one has sat down and walked you through all the different areas that can lead to anxiety can lead to depression. And a lot of people don't want to be on an SSRI. So what do we do instead? We start going to the next thing, which is taking a this for that approach to depression, to anxiety. And yes, it might be CBD. Yes, it might be THC. But even this, guys, the body still will adapt. And the reason why is this. Now, listen to this 
is because you still haven't gotten to the cause. So if you never ever fix causes, even taking something natural, the body still will adapt to it. And so the biggest thing is, guys, is that long-term use of THC um, can cause issues with increasing anxiety and increasing depression, which is actually the very reason why someone would want to take it in the first place. And let me finish by saying this, is I understand that these things are very real. We need to stop stigmatizing this happening in people because I know that probably some of you, I'll see some uh, comments and they'll say, well, you should never take these things uh, anyway at all. But let me ask you something. You might be handling your anxiety. You might be handling your depression in a different way. It might be with alcohol. Um, you say, well, I don't drink either. But let me ask you another question. You might be handling it or covering it up by eating a boatload of sugar. And I see that, you know, I always tell people, what is your drug of choice? Because the reality is, is many people will, uh, will try to uh, handle their anxiety, which is at an all-time high in the United States, or their depression, which is at an all-time high in the United States, and they're they're handling it in some way. It may not be CBD, it may not be THC, it may not be cannabis, medical marijuana, it may not be alcohol, but is it sugar? And for a lot of people, it actually is the overconsumption of sugar because there is a there is a a hormone neurochemical response of dopamine associated with that as well. So guys, it's all about getting to the cause. We even have to stop trying to cover things up naturally, which I get those questions so many times is what about this supplement? What about that? What about this? And in reality, you will drive yourself crazy and this is why I do have some people taking 20 different supplements when they come into the office and I ask them, why are you taking this and is it helping? And they say, not really. So it's time sometimes, guys, to go back to the drawing board, especially when it comes to anxiety, when it comes to depression, and stop doing this for that and start looking at the body as the Swiss watch principle. Even uh, on last uh, Monday night's live, you know, a lot of people had asked me about the gallbladder um, They uh, on some of the videos. And they said, well, I didn't have stones, but I had a gallbladder that wasn't working. And I said, well, if you understand physiology, one of the ways in order to make the gallbladder work or to contract is actually to have enough stomach acid because it's the stomach acid that will then allow for secretin to be released from uh, the duodenum, which then stimulates bicarbonate uh, release from the pancreas. And it's that uh, secretin and bicarbonate that allows the gallbladder to be able to contract. So you guys see how everything starts to work together. And you don't know have to know everything, but you need to find a doctor who does. And this is why, you know, guys, if you need to work with a doctor, work with the Wellness Way doctor who understands this approach. And no, we are not taking on new patients right now. <laughs> so that's why, guys, what you need to go to is to thewellnessway.com. Find a doctor near you or also try to find a doctor if you don't have one in the area who can work with you remotely. We refer people all the time to wonderful doctors uh, across the United States who can help you just as well that I can help you as well. Because it's not me. It's the actual approach. You just happen to be listening to me, but you can find a doctor with the same exact approach. So guys, I hope you gain value from it. Please share this video um, you know, as well, because I know that a lot of people have that question regarding medical marijuana, uh, CBD oil, uh, THC, the, you know, the psychoactive component of cannabis. And, um, you know, here's my perspective and here's my opinion. And if you agree, awesome. If you disagree, let me know why you disagree and, um, you know, show me why. So guys, I hope you have an awesome, awesome, uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, be well, I may be joining you guys live, maybe on Friday, uh, maybe on Saturday. Uh, but as always, I'm always appreciative, always humbled that when you like, when you share, when you comment, uh, I always love to read the comments. So guys, I hope you have an awesome evening. Be well, be blessed, and we'll talk to you guys very soon.